Good morning. Okay, so we now proceed to our lesson three, which is all about the continuation of first two lessons, which is all about the four basic concepts. When we're talking about the characteristics of a mathematical language. So we have their set, a relation, a function, and a binary operation. So first is what we call a set. So this is a collection of distinct symbols in ordered objects. So a collection of numbers through a set may contain any type of data. So basically, this is a collection of anything. Okay? So if we call that one as a whole, as a set, which is uh, represented by capital letters. So capital letters, let's say A, is an example of a set. Then we call the members, members or elements of the set. Let's say set A is 1, 2, and 3. So, we call 1, 2, and 3 as the members or the elements of the set, which should be distinct or not repeated and well defined or well explained. Okay? So, again, it must not repeated, be repeated or the elements must not be repeated. So, we have an example. So, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 is the set of positive odd numbers less than 10. Africa, Asia, America, Australia, Europe are sets of continents in this world. So, all students in a class whose names begin with a constant, the continent is a well-defined property shared by lands above the names. So, let's say we have here the set of BS Industrial Technology Student Section Blank Kung ano mang section yun Then we call the students as The elements or the members of that certain set So we have two ways on how we're going to define a set We have what we call the roster method And the second one is the rule or defining method so, kapag daw sa roster method, you're going to enumerate all of the elements. Pero when it comes to rule or defining method, you have a certain format on how you're going to write it. Let's have an example. This one, for number one, how are we going to write this one into roster method? So, let's say A is the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So that is how we're going to write that one into roster method. How are we going to write it in a um, rule or defining method? We have there like this, <coughs> x such that x. So we read this one as set A is the set of all x such that x is and we're going to define is a positive positive odd number less than 10. So that is how we're going to write the rule or defining method. Let's say number 2. B is Africa, Asia, America, Australia, Europe. That is how we're going to write it in the roster method. While for rule or defining method, we have there X such that X is a continent. Pwede ganon, or continent in this world. Yeah. Okay, so that uh, those are the two ways on how we're going to define. Again, we have there the roster method, or you're going to list all of those ones. While in the rule or, <coughs> or defining method, or what we call the set builder notation, so the other term for that one is the set builder notation, is having a format X such that, 
Okay, so yung vertical line daw, ang pagbasa natin doon is x, such that x. Okay, then we have the kinds of sets. So, an infinite set has unlimited number of elements. So, we have there an infinite set versus a finite set. Kapag infinite set siya, it is uncountable or we cannot count. While a finite set is countable. Infinite set may forever, finite set walang forever. Ayan. Just uh, what I've told you in my sessions. Example, set of all days in a week is an example of a finite set, while the set of all integers is an infinite set. Okay? Then we also have what we call the empty set, the null set, or the void set, which has no elements, versus the totality, which is the universal set, or U. So, if you're going to write an empty set, it would be like this. A is an empty set. Or if not like that, it would be A is like that. Okay? So, any of those ones. But you cannot write it as like this. Because it would be wrong. Or we can say that this one is an element of set A na which is a one element. And ang tawag daw natin sa set na iisa lang yung element is what we call a unit set. Unit set. Kapag iisa lang yung element, that is a unit set. Yeah. Then we have the universal set or U or the totality. Parang ito yung pangkalawakan. Universe, pangkalawakang set. Okay, then we have the relations on sets. We have two. We have what we call the equal sets and the equivalent set. Kapag equal set, magkaparehas at magkaparehas yung element. Let's say example here, magkaparehas talaga 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Kahit man nagka, uh, nagkabaliktad yung mga placement, basta parehas yung content, then uh, that is what we call equal set. While equivalent set, they just have the same number of elements. Or magkaparehas yung number of, yes, magkaparehas lang yung number of element nila. Let's say dito, A and B. We have 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. If we're going to count them, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So that is an example of an equivalent set. Okay, so equivalent set. So A, B, 1, 2. B is A, B. C, D. Okay, this is an example of an equivalent set. Because they have no, uh, the same number of students. I uh, students. The number of elements. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is the difference between the equal and universal. Ah, uh, equal and universal. Equal and equivalent set. Lutang ba? February 14. Ayan. Um... Disjoint sets have no elements in common. Okay? Yan. Yan. 